Alright, um, so first one I talked about was just kind of strategically, I do think of contests essentially are a test of our social dancing, or at least our main contest, the Jack and Jill, the Strictly formats, are a test of our social dancing skills. However, I do like to use my social dancing to sort of grow my dancing and improve it for the contests. So what I mean by that is I tend to kind of dance outside my box when I'm social dancing. That's where I test things. That's where I experiment with things. That's where I work on things. Most importantly, that is where I let things go wrong so that I can kind of expand my box, grow my dancing, and have things work better when I get into the competition format. Okay? Um, then we talked about how there's not a lot of things that for me are specifically different about social dancing versus competing, but one exception is once you get to the level, so like some novice finals would be kind of the start of this, of the audience being on one particular side of you, you need to be careful of how you aim your moves. So if I set up a dip right here, that doesn't matter for social dancing, but if you're the audience, that's kind of awkward. So we talked about like, well, that works great from this side. But if I'm coming from the other side, I would do this instead. Or, instead of changing the move that I did to redirect it, I might just have another move that kind of accomplishes the same goal, but works better from this side. Boom, that one does not work super well from this side. I'm like, oh crap, you guys are over there, right? So getting just kind of being aware for that and aware of that and getting the getting a feel for like can I change the move to end in the same place even though I came from the other side? Or is there another move that works from this side better? And I know like when this is my goal, these things work from this side and these things work from this side. Um, then we talked a lot about the idea of learning your partner as you go, which is a general social dance strategy but specifically important for Jack and Jill's in contests is that we want to get a better feel for what works well with our partner, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses. So I talked about how a lot of times with moves, leaders don't test the elements of more difficult things before they go for that difficult thing, and then it fails miserably. So one example I talked about was turns, like how good is my follower at turns? How well balanced are they? How fast can they do them? So, I want that dip to happen on five, right? Okay, how well does my follower do a basic inside turn? She feels pretty stable and quick to me. I bet I could do two and get there on five. One, two, three, four, five. But I had a good idea that was gonna work already because of how she did the inside turn. Because what if she hadn't been super good at her turns? I have your feet like super wide. And this slows her down a lot. And I'm like, oh crap, I didn't make it. We get stuck here, she loses her balance. Followers, we talked about on the dip. Like, maybe the first time the leader does something like this, you probably should fly way out. But maybe he did a shirt push earlier and like lean a little into the shirt push. And she's like, oh, he supported me really well on that. So I bet when he leads this dip, he'll support me if I'm a little more enthusiastic. But you probably shouldn't go for that on the very first thing with your partner, because if they don't support you, it's a big problem. So I test things in increments so that when they fail, they fail a little bit and I get like a small hiccup rather than a big blowout. Um, then we did a bunch of different examples of this. I showed some examples with ducks of how like this is an easy duck and don't duck. So if they don't do it and that's not a big deal, right? But if she does that one and she does it well, then I'm like, oh, cool. Good chance I can do this with that at the end, which is a, lot, a little bit more challenging and more involved. Followers, when you're styling on the sugar push, if you try to twist through this and ask for extra connection or lean or tilt, how does he respond? Are his arms super stiff and they jam you? Or does he work with you? Same thing in closed position. Can you move around with this? Or is this frame rigid? Right? Like his first starter step tells you right off the bat. Like, oh, she's got some freedom to move there. Right? Um, leaders, we talked about how I don't put my follower on the spot for a big moment without having tested it first. So I might do this and see like, how does she do with these extra walls? Like, cool, she seemed pretty enthusiastic about that. Before I do this to her and put her on the spot, right? Sometimes leaders set the fall or if they do stuff like this, they don't notice that the follower hates it. They keep doing it to them over and over again. Followers, we have that underarm where you uh, stop short. 
see like a clear like uh, or if you stop yourself short does he react deal with that and that tells you a little bit about like can i change things on him i changed the little thing cool maybe i can change the slightly bigger thing. um and then we finished up by talking about the connection idea of calibrating your connection kind of from here of light heavy medium whatever and then like this and that this, that, that, you should all use similar amounts of connection. Something more exaggerated, we'll use more. But like our baseline movements should use a similar baseline amount of connection, and that baseline could be wider or heavier in different partnerships. So getting the idea to be adjustable with that, and then calibrating it with your partner, so you understand in this dance with this person, here's how much connection changes direction. So it's not a wild guess every single time. All right, awesome. Thank you guys so much, everybody.